Hi, this is Bill, the Tactical Accountant. Welcome to my channel. Self-Defense Laws in Canada, an overview. Hi, I'm Bill, the Tactical Accountant. There's a disclaimer, I'm an accountant, not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. However, I was a CTSS instructor for roughly 10 years. Uh, it's a provincially accredited peace officer, pro, uh, post, peace officer program Sorry, that teaches proper use of force, arresting and handcuffing, control tactics, including the application of the expandable baton. I also teach martial arts, including jiu-jitsu and kali. Now, the Canadian Criminal Code was updated in 2012, and we'll give you some highlights of this. Section 34 talks about the self-defense rules, and as long as the defender believes on reasonable grounds that force is being used against them or another person against a threat or a threat of that force, well, you can use defensive measures. It is a subjective test based on what the defender truly believes and an objective test what a reasonable person or the judge believes based on the same factors that you present and those factors will be in um, sub 34.2. Now there has to be a purpose of defense so you can't go too far and go into revenge or anger. Uh, now the act also has to be or your defensive act has to be reasonable in the circumstances so no excessive force allowed. So what are those factors? Well, you have to look at what was the actual attack. Was it a grab versus a slap and a punch or a kick? That's an item. Also, was the attack imminent? Was it happening now or was it you know, over the phone, an internet post or some other reason, but not up close and personal? That means it's much more imminent. What was the defender's role in this? Did they provoke it? Were they an instigator or was it just an innocent person who got attacked? And did any parties use a weapon? They factor that in. And the size, age, and gender, and the physical capabilities of the parties. Was one large, was one small, were the multiple attackers? Those are factors as well. Also, was there any history between the attacker and defender? Was there an ongoing dispute? Or were they friends, strangers? So that is a significant factor. But one of the big ones that we'll focus on is, was it proportional to the attack? So was it a punch for a punch or a slap? And then the defense was an eye gouge. One is, you know, could be considered to be maybe not proportional. So nicety is not required. And nicety is nothing more than saying, it has to be the exact same force that was applied to the defender that the defender can respond with. It can be slightly more. And we won't talk about H, which is a defending against police action, which you probably shouldn't be doing, okay? Now, was there some guidance in the basic security training course by the Solicitor Generals? They just talk about excessive force by saying, oh, there's reasonable force, and it's consistent with the physical and mental characteristics of the subject. And they gave the example of a small female subject versus large men and the responses can be different, it should be different. Now, the RCMP has a use of force model and that's included in the CTSS program that I, uh, that I taught. And it gives you a pretty sophisticated grid and the factors, but we'll break it down in the following charts. So, the type of attacker or the subject behavior, were they relatively cooperative? You want them to stop, you tell them to stop, the power of your voice and body language did it. Or was it idea of passive behavior, which means you tell them no, but they just don't do anything. They don't cooperate. Well, like a protester or they're severely intoxicated, they need to be physically compelled to move. Okay? So there's some things you can do. And then an active resistor, they're holding on to that sofa. They are holding on to some door. They don't want to go. Okay? They may need more. Okay? And there will be techniques I'll show you in subsequent videos. But the assaulted one, which is much more serious, will be where they will, or there's an act in which they reasonably believe, or reason leads you to believe that you or someone else will be assaulted. So it didn't happen, but they, it looks pretty imminent. And that would be threats to injure you, attack you, or aggressive posturing, clenched fists, a fighting stance, some pre-attack gestures, and I'll, I'll demonstrate some of those in future videos. Or they actually assaulting you or someone else. That's the grabbing, 
punching, kicking, biting, and even spitting. Quite nasty. That constitutes an assaultive behavior. And of course, there is grievous bodily harm or deadly assault. This is going to cause okay, um, significant injuries such as the breaking of joints, someone's targeting their heads with some weapon, or use of any weapon, uh, a weapon of opportunity, knives, or even well, guns. Okay, so that would be bad. So with that, well, you're in a world of, of danger. So what are the response options? Well, at the very low end, you just gotta look strong. The predator versus prey look. Yeah, look alert. And maybe have your camera phone out. They don't know if you're live streaming or you're recording evidence, so looks good. Uh, communication, clear commands. No, stop, call for help. That's a response. And then there's a soft physical responses such as restraining, joint locks, pressure points, and specified strikes. Those are some soft restraint or soft techniques. Hard ones would be causing damage to tissue or bones. This will the responses include kicks, punches, stun strikes, and of course lethal force. In the most extreme cases, that causes death or grievous bodily harm, unconsciousness. Okay, something that results in protracted, obvious physical injury, or if they use a gun, knife, or weapon of opportunity, or even an automobile. So, and talking about weapons here, a weapon is anything that is designed to be used that causes injury or death to a person, and those are key words here, or the threat of such. Okay, so remember, anything that you carry or use as a weapon against a person well, the police will see it as that way as well. So that could be a baseball bat, newspaper, pepper spray, duct tape and chloroform we see in movies, but the police may try to charge with anything they can if you have anything that you're using or caring for that purpose against a person. Now, oops. So let's put this theory on, and the theory is called the one plus theory, which means you get to use a little bit more force than what was used against you to repel their attack. But that means if it's passive, you get to say, use verbal responses, soft restraint, escorting. If they're actively resisting, you get the you know, earlier items, but you get to add in some limited strikes. Assaultive behavior when they're, it's an assault, then you get to course the verbal, the hard, and the soft, okay? And you get to use kicks, punches, and stun strikes but no intermediate weapons. Um, and grievous bodily harm, then you get to use all responses um, from verbal, soft, hard, all with the deadly force to repel their deadly assault, including use of isogen weapons or whatever is available. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you want to see. Stay sharp.